Hello. Yes. Um, welcome, everybody. My name is Rudolf Ampo. I'm the senior right now and national manager at the World Media Foundation. Happy to be here with all of you. We are a few, no, a lot of minutes behind shadow, but um, we'll try and facilitate this conversation between partners and community members. So this is a conversation between, so they've met at an airport, they're all going back home, they've met, they want to talk about partnerships and the work that relates to community. And so these individuals will be talking with themselves. My role is to be helping the crowd be eavesdropping. So that means as the conversation is happening, you can basically raise your hand. If something strikes you, you can ask. You can chime in, you can add, you can debate, it's fine, you are eavesdropping. But these individuals are having a conversation, the community and partners are having a conversation. And what about? It's about being in this together. Right, over the last four years, partners and community members have together worked with 3,000 contributors. Now, this, these are not unique people, these are cumulative people. So one, one person can be counted twice or three times, but at least it means that they've done work together. Now, with all these, these, these contributors or people working together, they've done 99 programs together across the continent. One shot 100 programs. And as you can see, there has been 44 million views out of the work they've done collectively. Now when I say they, I mean community and partners coming together to work towards a unified group. And so today, we, we can see some of our partners. We have Moleskine Foundation, so the CEO or co-founder of Moleskine Foundation, Adam Asane, um, here with us today. We have the British Council, um, their senior evaluations um, advisor for Africa. We have Bokola James, who is the Wikipedia and president for Africa, and we have Seslaus who has also worked as a president for the African Union and currently going to support the African narrative. So I will hand it over to this, this group to generally have their conversation and we can all eavesdrop. And the starting point is more than 15 research articles, some by the, some by the community but also by the outside group, have indicated that knowledge is not evidently accessible on the internet, especially in Article 15. If you have these slides, you can click on some of the links, read some of these articles. So I'll leave this to the group to have a conversation, and if I see them striking, I can probably even throw a question at them to help them move forward. Um, or so over to you, whoever wants to start. Closing the 
a gap that exists um, between those that have access to British standard education and those that don't. So in many countries in South Africa, the countries, with our largest education program, which was called Connecting Classrooms, the primary schools were supporting children and teachers with critical thinking skills and 21st century skills. And we're working through government-owned public education systems and making sure that teachers of young children understand what 21st century skills are and are supporting the learners that are in the classrooms to access, to use those 21st century skills. And similarly in Nigeria, we have a massive program that we're implementing in Kano State where we're supporting young, young children with accelerated learning. So children that cannot move to secondary school because their primary education is not sufficient. We're supporting them with a language transition with um, because the Nigerian curriculum, the standard is that at lower levels it's okay for you to be taught in your native language. So we're supporting children who are programs to try to have they're not supposed to do that after um, primary school. But for children that miss that opportunity between primary and to see, we're still supporting them in language and classes and translating them into English and math as well as primary school and support them into secondary school. And we had a fantastic program in Ghana, the Schools for Success program, where we partnered with Wikipedia, with the Wikimedia Foundation on media and information literacy with um, Ghanaian um, universities and teacher training colleges. And we're supporting the, the, the lecturers at these establishments to have the skills that they would use to support their learners who are students, teachers, and migrants who are teaching young children at primary secondary level with the skills they need for that literacy around media and information that they're critical thinkers, that they're able to use open source materials confidently. And more than that, that they're able to establish what is the right information and what isn't, and can take the best out of the internet. So we try in both ways, where there's two people, and we meet you at play and we help you to have the right network and the right opportunities for the right education. We also support you with issues that scholarships, support young people who are achieving different aspirations that they have to go to university. It's a lockdown, and it's good for them. Is bridging the gap and is supporting those who have access to get to the Interesting to know. And uh, I was just also while you were speaking, and I know that you try to support people who are more evident for telecom where they need to support them in terms of their trying to help them improve the educational standard and the likes. So I wanted to also maybe get uh, at the knowledge gap in terms of let's say language and how language is in Africa. What do you what does your um, organization do in that regards? Is it just about uh, educational standard? What uh, kind of educational standard? Is it the UK educational standard you're looking at or uh, their local context trying to really improve I just by the cultural relations organization and we meet you where you are as an individual, as a public entity, as a country, and where the country has a particular policy and a particular standard of education, we meet you there and support you there. There's a lot of work that we've done around um, so that we can try to standardize the assessment. There's a lot of our assessment, but these are country nation specific assessments that we help to standardize and do that work.
Thank you. Uh, so my my question will be for you, Adama. You know, I think it was yesterday um, during the dinner, our colleague up there, uh, when I mentioned who was king. She was like, "Oh, they don't speak company." You know, how did Moskin move from notebook or stationery to partnering with the local movement? Fair question. Um, well, it, it's, it's because we have two different entities. Um, there is the Volsky company that does the rules, the uh, and, uh, and then there is the Volsky Foundation that we created uh, in, in 2017. But we created it in a very unique way because technically, Volsky Foundation is an independent cultural institution. We have this very forward thinking agreement with the company that uh, basically allow us to be fully, fully independent. Um, we, you know, just to, technically the general counsel, that is the council that nominates the board of the foundation, nobody that has any corporate affiliation can sit there. Um, so, you know, that's how in practical, in practical terms, we are an institution that is independent. At the same time, the good thing is that Moleskine is a, Generally speaking, for who you know that you know, it is a is quite a lot brand. Uh, it, it doesn't have a lot of it doesn't bring a lot of controversy with it, and so it allows us to, to expand the ambition of the of the foundation. Um, it allowed us to to have a partnership because we we transform that Moleskin Foundation from a previously existing foundation which was called Data Twenty Seven, who engaged with Wikipedia you know a long time ago. But the interesting thing is that now as most in foundation, simply when we when we knock on the door of somebody, people answer, you know, just because they're curious and you know, because they want a couple of free notes. It's a little too easy. Um, but that kind of allows us to expand a little bit to the, the thing. And if I just to add and maybe like to, to get into the conversation with the peculiarity of, of, of the program of the British Council. We bring this idea of creativity that stays in the brand and we bring it in social change. So we focus on this idea of creativity for social change. And our main vision, you know, what drives us is how can we inspire a new generation of creative thinkers and doers. And the creative thinkers and doers is any, anybody, especially you, who is able to master critical thinking, creative doing, lifelong learning, and change making approach. All those things are now called essential skills. Um, and they are so hard to develop. And within that vision, Wikipedia, the role of the Wikimedia Foundation, the world of Wikimedia chapter, basically that's where we got our connection because Wiki is an incredible tool to develop those skills in young people in a unique way. Um, often is this overlooked the connection relation that exists between creativity and knowledge. Some people, even some, you know, uh, some intellectual even push it to say creativity is a function of knowledge. It's the debatable concept, but it's, it's partial to it. And so, when we look at our beloved African continent, and we look at the data that, uh, that Rudo showed us there, and, you know, and we know exactly what, what we're talking about. I mean, the first resolution was in the 50s. You know, UNESCO, the resolution of UNESCO in the, in the late 50s, 60s, was saying if the African continent doesn't start learning in its own languages, uh, you know, they will never catch each up with the rest of the world. Now, a lot of things changes, I'm not taking this really, but we knew this thing from a lot of time. And, and now the fact that it exists a, a, a technological solution and tool like Wikipedia, it's an incredible opportunity, and that's why we, we decided to, to engage since many years and figure out ways to collaborate in this, uh, this endeavor. And, but, but it's not easy, you know, so maybe it's not easy because, and then I, you know, I want to, to share it with you and I have a question with you because, uh, you know, for us as, this, as an organization, partnering with, with the Wikimedia movement. It, it took us a while to figure out how to do it, and we're still learning, of course. But that's why, because Wikipedia and the Wikimedia movement is a, is a beautiful utopia. 
if, if it wouldn't exist and you say, oh, these things could exist, people would say, like, no, it's impossible. It's impossible that, the, that, the, that one of the top 10 websites most used on the planet and one of the repositories of knowledge on the planet is being completely run by volunteers that self-organize themselves, you know, and they don't have an official boss, etc., etc., etc. It's a utopia. So for an institution and an organization that has its own way of working, dealing with that utopia that exists is hard. It's, it's, a, it's a hard thing to do. And it's a learning process that is this incredible. So it took us a while to figure out, you know, because there is so much, so many things, you know, that, 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 that we normally would have done. You know, before you were laughing and you were saying, you know, my model of humanity as an institution, you say like, okay, so I deal with you, you're the boss, you control everything, so if I speak with you, all the outcome is not necessarily exactly where it is. You know, everybody's own boss, it's about relationship, it's about making the thing the right way. So, so I'm kind of wondering, is also for your side of the British Council, you had this type of issue, uh, you know, and, and also vice versa, because I know that it is hard for us, you know, it's not, it's not hard, but it's not obvious in the way we collaborate, you know, as a institution, but maybe I'm sure that also as community, to deal with the institution, it is, it's not obvious at all. Things happen that are unplanned. So, for instance, in the um, project that we were running in Ghana, there was a three month strike, and a lot of the activities that we had designed could not be implemented as planned. We now had to move from face to face training to digital training, and then you find out that the digital divide that we're talking about and access to the internet is real, and young people may have data, little data they have. They may not want to spend it learning, they may want to spend it on Instagram. And so just managing the dynamics of making sure that the community that we had on our project was still invested and learning through the project was something that we had to work through and really learn. And navigating um, the corridors of the government, the, the educational institutions, that was also us learning how to forge relationships with government. So in that sense, as a project and as individuals that worked on the project, we learned a lot about um, managing relationships, managing people, and looking for alternatives when the established route has been um, changed or reduced. Um, well. And I have a question for you around your work working with African Americans and um, how that partnership was forged and how it has influenced you. And how do you feel you're working with African women in the West? Um, definitely, you know, the African Union would uh, always uh, see itself as the biggest boss on the continent. And they're right, by the way. And, uh, you know, when we got on board, they felt it was going to be that um, from AU to the community kind of approach. Sorry, how was the community working with? How was the community working with um, African Union? Okay, uh, for the community, it was uh, basically, you know, ground implementation of the various AU campaign around the content creation campaign around. We, you know, walked into the project, right? But then uh, the AU, to a large extent, didn't even know how to interface with the community. Uh, let me give you an instance. So they happen to, which I really give them the kudos for, they, they happen to have been archiving for many years. And in Africa, it's not something you can easily walk up to a national government to ask, oh, do you have archives? You would mostly get no, except for very few African governments. But the AU somehow, somehow, no matter how crude the archives are, they've managed to keep stuff from over the years. 
stops from 1970 and things like that. So they didn't even know that perhaps we should have had access on this new department. We then said, okay, we need access to what's archived over the years. And it was a deep dive that, you know. Oh, okay, go ahead. So, um, different organizations have uh, different interests in uh, projects. Uh, you are all of sitting there representing different organizations. I, I've noticed that over, over time, uh, partnering with different, different organizations, that sometimes there is conflicting interest when it comes to outcomes uh, and how we are measuring the, the outcomes. We have figured out over the years that uh, don't focus too much on the number of articles, for example, that you have to produce at the end of an editor shop. And uh, we've also figured out that uh, when you have maybe like 50 um, uh, participants in, a, in an event, uh, you are lucky to actually produce maybe five active Wikipedians who should continue to, 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 to edit. I want to understand from you, how do you measure success? In each of you, how do you measure success and how do you navigate the, uh, the different interests when you are partnering with Wikipedians, for example, you partner with you uh, uh, for and we've done some work with, with you as well the organization. Uh, and, and one of the things that I've noticed was that uh, sometimes how we do things and what we want to see at the end of the project is a bit different. And sometimes to our community members, they don't want to get involved in that because, or they get involved to a certain point and they don't want to continue because for us it's finished. We've run the, 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 you know, the project. Uh, but for you, you might want to still continue because you want to achieve you know, particular purpose. Yeah, so my question is, yeah, how do you navigate, navigate it? Yeah. Um, so how, how do you measure success? Well, it's... Uh, uh, okay. Um, well, I, I think that the, the, the starting point when you said about, I agree with the, with the output, the question about the output, and, they have been like conflicting sometimes um, goal and objectives. Um, well, the, the starting point for me is that's where the shared value approach comes in. Like, we are two different organizations. We have different roles. We do different things. And, uh, and I think what we learn at some point is just that not to fully necessarily align on the overall strategic thing, but is to find share value moment and say, okay, can we do this, this piece together, you know, and by doing this piece together, can we actually advance, you know, each other's mission and objectives, and that's, that's the style. So, the share value approach for us is really the first, the first thing. The, the, the interesting thing about the numbers, uh, and this was an incredible learning uh, for us, is that the moment that we stop thinking about the numbers and start looking at the process, um, the numbers start coming. You know, it's, it's this interesting, it's this interesting element, and it took us a while to to figure it out. Right? I mean, it's a it's a it's a, it's a, it's a complex um, but but that kind of helped a lot. Uh, for us, um, the main goal is always those uh, creative skills that we were talking about. Is bringing young people from underserved communities, uh, you know, to having an educational experience that allow them uh, to uh, develop certain skills, potential. And while doing that, we mainly focus on bringing, especially cultural organizations, in contact with the media world. And by bringing you know, two things together, basically, the African experience is a fundamental, fundamentally a cultural experience with an output on the media. Within these, within these things, then sometimes beautiful alchemy emerges. 
Um, we were chatting yesterday. Um, we have worked with the, with the Northern Mozambique, the University of uh, uh, Rukuma University, Northern Mozambique, and a small publishing house, and our Wikimedia residency, and, uh, and also many of you that Wikimedia the same support a language that didn't have anybody before. And, uh, and besides the fact that, uh, you know, they said it's the first time they're producing, you know, more than 700 entries in three years in, in the Makua language, but the beautiful thing is that they were saying it's the first, it's the first time that we see our language online. The only other type of content that it, that it was accessible before was the Bible in the Makua language. That's it. You know, and, and just to see what they were saying, how impactful this was on their identity process is interesting. And then, just to add one thing, something that we didn't expect at all, but to us is extremely important, is that the, um, that one of the, the original uh, um, organizer of the program of Italian publishing now is doing, because of, as a strange outcome, as a strange outcome that happened, they allow him to do a PhD in a Makua language at Nuruma University. And it's incredible. It's incredible. It's, it's an incredible success. And so our way to measure success is, is a little bit fluid. We have our goals, but we, we're learning how to, you know, how to measure expectation and then how to be open to the outcome of your things. Okay, so we'll take one more contributor and then we'll go ahead and talk to Impact. Hi guys, um, I'm Ayla from Cape Town, from Wiki in Africa. Uh, I've worked with one of you before, um, but I just wanted to, as some as an organisation that's worked with a lot of partners before, um, many times we, as um, as youth groups and organisations, are, are kind of like caught in this pilot stuff, like the pilot cycle, in that we are funded for a pilot. And then the pilot doesn't continue, and so um, because of what, whatever happens, but the, the learnings then are, in a way, kind of it's a great experiment. But you know, then so we've had several projects, say like we collect women, which isn't uh, wasn't funded from around this table, but um, that then is has to stand in suspension for a little bit until then we have to access funding from another source who then also then buys into another with another set of goals and ambitions and everything. And it's just a plea basically, I suppose, from our side, is think beyond the experiment, to think beyond the pilot. And I think it just is carrying on with Bobby and other people have said is just how do we Yes, maybe the, the uh, expectations are not aligned at the end with the, with the results, but the learnings can then be continued by together, working together to move that forward. But it, that has to be something that's talked about right at the beginning, about like, how do we use that pilot to then drive further in a much more long-term way than just a six-month pilot here or a, 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 month, you know, a year's thing there. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to go on impact. Okay. Okay, uh, so just to go on impact, I got into the code for Africa when uh, there was this project ongoing and it was focused on climate change. And knowing fully well that climate change literacy in Africa is still very low, and also given the fact that sometimes it's even very hard to get uh, relevant second resources to uh, improve Wikipedia articles around climate change topics and the likes. So uh, for them, initially they didn't think about uh, how would this impact the community. Will they be able to contribute meaningfully well to these projects? So uh, those, those are some of the things I think partners or organizations need to really uh, think, uh, deep dive into. Uh, rather than just maybe embarking on a project, you really have to consider the community, you have to consider if the resources available can uh, help you measure impacts for those programs. So uh, coming from the, uh, representing the community, I'm always, uh, I'm always uh, very, uh, I'm always 
very conscious about what the community needs are. So uh, take for example, if you want a, uh, the community to, you want to improve their media and information literacy skill, then you should be able to uh, set out uh, programs, like very, very well structured programs that would help address those needs that you, or those uh, goals that you want to achieve. So uh, for, for my advice for organizers or for organization who want to carry out projects is basically to really ensure that they understand uh, the scope of that project and also know how they are going to ensure that the community are able to uh, really carry out and impact that uh, project that you want to execute. So it's really about measuring impact is are the community benefiting from that program or project that you want to carry out. And it's not just about the numbers, like we all know that dashboards is only really statistics of uh, numbers for wiki, different wiki projects. So uh, beyond just numbers, beyond just piloting, what, how do you sustain the community? So those are some of the things we need to really put into consideration before we then just go into it. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, everyone, thank you so much for coming here. At the end of the day, we are all working towards one goal, making the world a better place, using open knowledge. How do we get there? How do we work together? Let's sustain our communities, let's sustain the work they're doing. This is not an experiment, this is the lives of people who bring their, self, their whole selves and soul to work. So as partners, as community, we need to take time to learn about each other, have collective impact and work towards a shared goal. It's not an experiment, it is making the world a better place. Thank you and have a good lunch. <laughs>